Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I uh, got another 5J1113 diesel engine assembly installment for you guys. In the prior episode, we put the intermediate cover onto the block and it is now time to start filling that area up. So on the bench here, I've got some timing drive components. All of them that go in there. Everything's clean, everything's been checked. Let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is get the camshaft installed in the block. So we've moved the accessory drive and idler gear and hub off to the side. We're just going to worry about the camshaft for now. This is 1113's original cam. And honestly, this cleaned up really, really, really nice. Uh, we're not going to get into bearing checks too much on here. We'll just do a quick overview because uh, back in the... Um, engine block final cleaning and cam bearing decision video there's a link to it right in the description down below you can go back check it out if you want we went through and did all the measurements for our journals and the bearings in that block the replacement block back in that video and we'll just quickly uh, run right through it again camshaft bearing journal diameter 2.245 to 246 and all three of these journals on 1113's original cam measured right 2.246 all all three of them and they're all round so that is very very good very little wear on the cam and these things are so heavy duty for the size of this engine and these bearings i mean they could have probably gotten by with bearings that were half the width of what these were and still would have survived just fine it's like these things just don't wear they're so overbuilt and the cam bearings in the block the replacement block all measured 2.250 round no appreciable wear found on any of those so you uh, basically do the math the bearing ids versus cam journal diameter gives me a four thousandths running clearance we have camshaft bearing clearance three to six so we are well within new spec max permissible 10 nothing to worry about there um, basically we've got brand new clearances on this setup only other spec i'm going to talk about here is end clearance on the cam six to ten thousandths maximum permissible 25. Um, end clearance is taken up by this bronze thrust washer right here and the right and proper way to do it is to get this installed in the block and get all the wear surfaces lined up with one another again and we'll pop a dial indicator on the end here and see what it is but just for kicks we have this six thousandths feeler gauge right here if i can get in there with one hand it's kind of a tight fit it's still a very good fit between that washer and the cam gear so that's the tight end of our spec there I don't think we're going to have any real problems with this. Now, as you can see, I've got some props laid out on the bench here. Um, basically, it's a disassembled D3400 camshaft. This is out of the beer can engine. Now, if you guys do not remember the beer can engine, again, link right down below. You can go check it out. It's, it's worth the watch, trust me. And also, I've compiled a complete playlist of all the 1113 videos from start to finish, starting when we recovered this machine all the way on through those parts engines all the way up into the assembly and to where we are right now. If you want to go refresh yourself from start to finish, it's all in one spot. So anyway, I disassembled the beer can engine cam so you guys can see what all the parts and pieces look like because I didn't bother taking 1113 can, uh, sorry, 1113's cam apart. I'm trying to talk a little too fast here tonight. Um, Really didn't see anything in here that scared me, and you guys know I'm not afraid of taking things apart. I just really couldn't find a reason to do it on this one. Um, gave everything a really good cleaning, good polishing, and I forced uh, parts cleaning solvent into this oil feed hole until no more um, black oily gunk came out from underneath the bronze thrust right here, and then I force fed oil, clean engine oil, into there until no more traces of solvent came out. Called it good. So, to disassemble one of these, it's really not rocket science. You have the cam. Here's the bronze thrust. Goes on the cam. Also rides on this area of the back of the gear. You have the cam gear. It is keyed. Here is the keyway on the cam. And this oil feed hole I showed you on the other one, you can see where it comes out right here. Force feeds everything into that thrust area there. And then holding it all together, is the fold over lock and the nut. And if you're wondering, the nut is inch and 11 sixteenths. So that's the size of socket or wrench you are gonna need. And I'll tell you guys what, I think Cat was conducting strongman competitions when they were assembling these, uh, these gears to the uh, camshafts because these are on incredibly tight. I've found that a little bit of heat, just enough to start cooking some of the old oil out from under the threads. 
really helps in getting this thing cracked loose. So that's what a disassembled D3400 cam looks like. Again, not rocket science, and really the only reason to take it apart that I can see is if you either have a bad gear or you need to renew this bronze thrust and get your end play more in spec. Before I put this in, I'm going to hit all three of the bearing journals with assembly grease. Um, I'm going to leave the lobes uh, alone for now. I might just give a just put a really light layer of engine oil on those. I'm not too worried about the cam lobes because I can access those through the lifter compartments um, before I put any of that stuff in. And I'm not sure I really want grease on those yet anyway. But speaking of cam lobes, uh, uh, characteristic with these D3400s, intake lobes are pretty well pointed. And the exhaust ones are very blunt. Um, you see that just on the exhaust uh, cam lobes. Do not worry too much about it. They are supposed to be that way, but the intakes have a pretty sharp profile. Another thing I love about this cam, that oil pump drive gear, just has no wear on the drive faces of those uh, gear teeth at all. This is a really, really nice cam yet. Now to install the cam, I also got assembly grease on the bearings in the block and all the journals are the same diameter, so you do have to have it pretty well centered while it's on its way in. Just be careful not to nick bearing surfaces too badly, although these are pretty heavy duty and fairly resilient, but still you just don't want to beat them up if you can help it. Well, we had the cam on its way in, but I um, found something I really didn't like with kind of how it fits. So, cam's back on the bench. I'll show you, or I'll explain what, uh, what was going on. I was installing the cam and it was smooth, smooth, smooth. All the bearings were lined in until we got about to the last quarter of an inch. I felt a point of resistance and then, boom, and then it became a little bit more difficult to turn, like something got a little bit tight. So, I pulled it back out, had a good look at everything. And I think I found the problem. It's nothing major, but it's something I am going to have to address. So bear with me, guys. I'll see if I can get the camera down here so you can get a pretty good look at the area. So just off the end of this tool right here, you'll see like a discoloration. Right now it might look dark, but when you get the light on it, it's actually bright. And that is freshly disturbed Babbitt on that cam bearing um, surface right there. Um, now, I've had to fit cams and bearings before. Uh, when I put the Farmall H engine together a few years ago, I actually had to scrape the brand new bearings because I had several high spots in there. I told you guys these bearings weren't worn too bad, and that's it's a tight spot is what it is. That would probably be fine because it's so small, but I'm gonna get in there with the Babbitt bearing scraper anyway. You last saw this tool when I had the new old stock main bearings. Uh, you know, basically when I was cleaning those up, getting the Cosmoline off and everything, I had to take a few nicks and high spots off of those. I need to get in there with that bearing scraper, take a little bit of that Babbitt off, and then I'll refit that cam and try it. I don't like tight spots if I can avoid them, and this is definitely the time to address that right now. Um, it would probably run in just fine if I started it and did a couple short test runs on the initial startup, but you know, without getting too hot, without galling, pulling material, but it's it's just one of those things. I've, I should just get in there and take care of it. Now I've got the tools to do it. I've got the time, a little bit of patience. We can have a better fit up. So let's see if I can get that scraped and catch it on camera at the same time. You can see the spot just off the edge of the scraper here. Just gently make sure we're gonna contact in the right area. Yep, it's looking good. I'll just peel a few thousandths off of that. No need to get crazy with it. Like I said, this is something that just happens when you're working on these old engines. So we have to remember, we're putting parts from one old engine into a block that was from another old engine. And this thing could have got knocked or bumped or it could have been a high spot the whole time. It's hard to say. Not a big deal. That's why they invented this tool that I'm using right now. 
carry out just this task so we'll just see how it fits there get all those little scrapings out of there first make sure we stay clean okay let's test that fit once again this is the area where I had the catch last time and that is nice nice and smooth no catch there try to spin pull it out a little bit it spins all right push it in it spins just the same that is exactly how it's supposed to be right there now we can move on okay final step now in installing this cam two bolts have to go through that bronze thrust plate to retain it and you work through these two openings in the gear we have the beer can engine gear and plate here for a visual aid and uh, two bolts hold that in you can see we have old fold over locks again that I am discarding I hate reusing fold over locks you guys know that by now and these are what are known as the cloverleaf locks and again we have a pretty good manual description the right and wrong way to install them and basically the right way is to position the tabs to ensure no counterclockwise movement the wrong way is if you bend the tabs and it can still drift counterclockwise pretty easy um, these are the L-364 locks as uh, shown in the parts manual for this engine they even have L-364 stamped in them call them cloverleaf because they're they're three-sided um, Still easily uh, found, easily uh, uh, obtained through CAT. Of course, the new part number is the 0L-0364. That's the new format, but it's still an L364 lock. So got these from Ziegler. They still, still sell them by the ton. And these are kind of nice because I think you can see the little, uh, the wings are kind of pre-bent up for you already. So, uh, Basically, you position them, fold the long leg down. So we'll, what we're going to do is work in through those two holes in that cam gear. We'll just take this right out of the way. And when you put the bolt on through, your best way to install these is to take that long leg and bend it down on this flat that's on the end of that plate. Um, you could go up or down with it, but you're not going to get quite as much of a bend. And if you bend that at a good 90 degree angle, it's not going to overcome either one of those corners right there. So then you tighten the bolt in and you bend up one wing or the other based on how well the flats align with each of those. So pretty simple, straightforward installation. That's the last I'm going to talk about cloverleaf locks from here on out. Well, it took me a while, but I did finally get the camshaft fully installed. Come down here and take a look. Both those cloverleaf locks are in place. And nothing to really report with in play. It was the same six thousandths of an inch that I had when I uh, checked it with the feeler gauge. So, tell you what, guys, I never seem to get as much packed into an episode as I want. But that's how it is. Had to do a little bit of extra work fitting that cam. It's in now, and I feel good about it. So, rest of the uh, accessory drive stuff we'll just have to wait for next time. Hope to see you guys back for that. Thanks for watching.